Jay, I just have a random question. Where are you going to put the, the new flag? Yeah, um, hopefully next to one of the other ones. Um, excited about that. Um, really looking forward to uh, the celebration. I think it's the weekend of November 11th uh, where the players will get their rings. Um, we'll have the, the plaque stone out there, um, which is, is really awesome. And then flag will be either there opening day. Um, Odd number, I guess, now is seven. So I'll leave that to the, the smarter people to uh, <laughs> figure all that. Great problems to have. <laughs> Specifically, what are you trying to accomplish um, in this sort of, in, over the last, well, have you tried to accomplish over the last month or two in this sort of odd period before you get into fall practice? Yeah, in the eight hour weeks, uh, four hours of strength and conditioning. Um, so we've done a lot of work on guys' bodies. Uh, Coach Jeremy McMillan. Um, Really happy to have him on board. I think he's the best strength coach in college baseball. I've believed that for several years and uh, really thankful that we have him at LSU. So uh, a lot of player assessments relative to their strengths and weaknesses, their body, how they move, uh, how that translates into developing ground force, rotational force to, to move the bat, to move in the field, uh, to move through their pitching delivery. So he's had a big hand in that part of it. Um, Got a lot of guys like we're uh, nursing some, you know, injuries. So Isaac Trujillo, our trainer, has been really important in that four-hour phase too. Um, as far as the on-the-field stuff, uh, building a foundation. I like doing fall practice later for several reasons. Uh, the team portion, that is, uh, gives the pitchers seven weeks. They've had essentially had seven weeks to build up their arms, uh, develop a good foundation with Coach Yeski. Uh, he's done an excellent job of giving them individual attention. You know, the, the bullpen sessions are two guys at a time. So it's essentially like every guy on our staff is getting an individual pitching lesson, you know, during the, those times. Uh, he's done a lot of really good mental game work, you know, with them in terms of stuff in the classroom. On the position player side of it, uh, it's about building a foundation. You know, we have a system. We go incredibly slow with that system. Like we'll scrimmage tomorrow night. We're nowhere near like ready to, to play and win a game tomorrow night. It's been a lot of individual fundamentals, whether that's been uh, individual defense, you know, with the infielders. It's been, um, you know, establishing our hitting foundation, which most of that is individual player mechanics, uh, things of that nature. Uh, you know, we just kind of started this week on you know, starting to build some things that you do in a game to, to win. And so uh, we'll do that over the next, you know, six and a half weeks of slowly put it all together. And, you know, I like to get through the fall with 50% done what we want to, but being 100% good at the 50% we're doing. So it's kind of the old cut it in half and try to master it theory. So different approach, but uh, it's one that we feel comfortable about. Um, there's a lot of new players on – the position player side of the ball, so you probably see us go a little slower than, than usual. Who's out? Who's <sighs> um, Tommy will not play this fall. Um, you know, he had a, a shoulder procedure uh, shortly after the College World Series uh, that was probably needed well into the year, but got it fixed up good. He'll be 100% ready to go, you know, uh, by when we start back up in January. Um, he's moving around, doing a great job with his therapy. <laughs> Uh, body looks great, um, so really pleased with, you know, you know, coming off of uh, a shoulder uh, repair that he's in a good spot physically. Um, super motivated, you know, obviously, you know, for the year, and um, you know, we just won't have the luxury of seeing him hit a bunch of line drives in fall practice. So, good news for our pitchers, you know, developing <laughs> confidence. Um, you know, Brady and Alex are on their way back to returning. Um, they will uh, both catch a little bit this weekend. Uh, they will not hit yet. Uh, they're probably both a couple weeks away from taking uh, at bats in games. Um, we've had a, a, a kind of a flu bug, if you will, or, or sickness kind of rolling through our team. So uh, there's be some guys that need to reestablish they can practice before we'll let them play in a scrimmage so uh, specifically to tomorrow it will be a very skeleton crew you know on on the field of what we have which is okay you know it's it's opportunities for other guys to get more reps and and those types of things and i'm 
you know, kind of looking forward to it. But, you know, our full complement, I don't think we'll really see that, you know, through this entire fall, just based on where we're at pitching wise. I uh, feel very good about where we are as far as a health wise at this point in time. Obviously, you know, Chase Shores and Jaden Newt are on their way back. Um, real positive today uh, where that lands, when they would be able to return. I, I don't have a time frame on that, but both are doing a great job physically with what they can control and uh, are super motivated to, to get back, which would be a big lift for us if, if that could take place sometime during this season. Did you ever figure out what Brady's yeah, it was just a, a back, you know, rotational, you know, type issue, which is why he's uh, catching now. But, you know, we're in our hitting progression. Um, he's handled the first five uh, days of that, you know, really, really well. And obviously uh, I'm itching to get him back on the field because we need the reps to get him better. I mean, he could be a great player. You know, I really believe that, um, you know, to be a pretty much the, the starter on a – national championship team as a freshman you have to have something to you we think he has something to you now you know we want to get him that next step offensively you know kind of something I've laid out for him is like can we get him you know Cade Beloso type of bats um, if he does that with being a catcher you know he's looking at a really good situation for himself in terms of the draft in 2025 but we got to get him back on the field and healthy so we can start moving towards that. Well, last month up here who has really you know taken this last month or two and really sort of stepped up and proved and pressed you? You know, that's a tough question to answer just from a, a standpoint of they haven't been challenged with anything yet. A couple that I will just, that are easy in terms of what we're seeing on the pitching side, um, Aiden Moffitt, which we believed that he could. Um, his summer was very valuable. Uh, he went up to the lacrosse loggers in the Northwoods League, which has always been like one of my staple places. Uh, a lot of guys playing in the major leagues right now that, you know, played in the Karras their, their freshman year, after their freshman year, and Aiden has really improved. Um, you know, I got to watch a couple outings on live stream. The talent is obviously there. You know, we'll see as the games, games start and all that, but he's in terrific shape. Um, he looks really athletic. Um, his body is in a good spot. So I'm proud of the direction he's heading on the position player side of it. Uh, Ethan Fry um, is, is probably the one that stands out the most right now um and again nobody's been real tested with anything but in terms of what we're seeing um those two guys are probably the ones that come to mind first oh, sorry just kind of building on that the year one to year two development for a lot of those guys it's obviously something you're banking heavily on this year yeah. just um what, what do you hope to see from that group you know the paxton's the brady's the Gavin Gidry's in terms of what he's going to do on the infield, just, just what, what is kind of the, the next step, I guess, for that group? Well, yeah, and I've, I've talked about this. Um, I talked about it a lot last year because it was our second year. The biggest strides I've had players make are between year one and year two, whether when our coaching staff showed up in year one to year two or the player from the freshman to the sophomore year. And I mean, you, you headlined it, you know. Um, Last year, I would say we had a perfect scenario where you either had high floor, high experience, or high ceiling, high talent, and low experience, where now the answer for this team is the improvement of the returning players. We have some really good new players, and I'm excited about those guys. Um, but, you know, Paxton, Jared, Brady, Gavin, those guys taking a step forward uh, – is at the top of the list as far as what you know we need to do you know with this fall and, and help prepare them for the season and uh it's very intentional um you know there's there's mental parts of that or uh um whatever you want to call it not character is not the right word but mental game parts of that and then there's some baseball skill parts i mentioned you know with brady like i'd like him to see him evolve into a Cade Beloso type at bat. Um, with Jared, uh, who hit 15 home runs and hit 300 in the SEC last year. So, I mean, I think you got Petrie at South Carolina, um, you know, Curland at Florida. I mean, you can make an argument that Jared, even though he wasn't starting at the end, was one of the top three or four freshmen in the SEC. Um, you know, just taking, uh, you know, just a little higher level at bat when the ball doesn't go over the fence. You know, kind of like we talked about with, with Braden and Joe Bear. And I'm using those as examples because I think those older guys gave those guys some real solid emulation of, of where we want to take that 
that next step. Um, you know, with Paxton, uh, he's an elite defensive outfielder, uh, terrific speed. Um, you know, we saw really good flashes. I think he hit about 290, 297 in uh, 100 at bats last year. And again, to get 100 at bats as a freshman on that team, whew, that tells you what we think he can be. Uh, he just needs to play. You know, you'll see him. You see him hit one, two, or three in every inner squad for the entire fall. You know, very much the same with Jared, very much the same with Ethan uh, to accelerate those guys' development. Do you, um, does, does your message or does the motivation change coming off a, ch a championship season like this for this team, or are you always looking every year to, to change things a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. I think uh, there's different things that um, this team will need to do uh, different than last last year's team you know relative to maybe motivation or approach we can emulate some things that we're really positive about that group uh, with this group um, we've really kind of squashed the notion of like we're not defending we're not repeating it's this is a completely different team and um, you know something that we've talked a lot about is it's very human nature you know to maybe relax or pull back when you've won or you've been successful and um you know in the 10 minutes i have every once in a while i was watching that show on the lakers on hbo which was mostly not very good um <laughs> but the, the character of pat riley was really good and there was this scene where he was talking about the difference between wanting to win you know and loving basketball and he's like these guys want to win and they love basketball but after their second championship, he felt like they lost, like they have to win, they needed to win. And then when Larry Bird beat them in the 1984 finals, like that changed it. And then they won three of the next four because they kind of got back to like, hey, this, this is in our DNA. Like this made Magic and Kareem and all those guys special. And it was like in the 1984 season, they lost that. So, I mean, I haven't, I can t tell you that. And, and this is a new thing for... A lot of guys. I mean, you know, I think in the, the lineup that last night, you know, six of those guys obviously moved on, you know, to professional baseball or, or graduated. So it's, it's not even the same team. So um, I do think you have to look at it a little bit differently, and we want to look at it a little bit differently. And, you know, we've thrown out some challenges to some of the returning players, the guys that have been here for a few years. Like, you know, they could leave here as one of the most successful classes in LSU baseball in a long time. And that's saying a lot with the amount of success that's that's been had around here. But they could do that, you know, and um, I think they're excited to go for that. And um, I think, you know, emulating some of those positive things that we've seen, um, we had really strong player leadership last year. And there's some guys that are really trying, you know, to push that forward. And I'm really happy to see that. When you have a new pitching coach for every year for the last three years, from the outside looking in, some might think that is something, but with the portal and the addition of new players, does that really kind of mitigate any of those concerns that you would have? Yeah, kind of used to it, it is something. It means a lot of good things are happening here. It means we're winning a lot and, and, and people are getting promoted, which I'm always for. You know, I mean, I had a good conversation with Scott Woodward, you know, kind of about this. And, um, you know, he was like, you know, it's something you're going to deal with, you know, here. He's like, um, you know, you just obviously want to make sure you never want to run out of talent you know and and that sort of thing well we have not done that I mean you mentioned how we're uh, approaching the fall there's a lot of new on the coaching staff side of it too so I or we are not taking anything for granted in terms of how we set up every day the advantage I have with Kocheski is we were together for two years and so the comfortability if you will of knowing what's taking place with those guys how it's taking place you know, what the end product, you know, is going to look like, especially with the talent that we have on that side of the ball, which I am really excited about. Um, that's a really good thing for us, that in this case, it is the third pitching coach in three years, but it's, it's somebody that's really highly qualified that there's some familiarity with. And that's a real, real positive uh, thing. But, you know, that's just something we're going to deal with here. I hope we continue to deal with it here because I want – People that think, uh, you know, coaches that have been around this program, this environment, this process, that they're highly qualified to 
move on and improve somebody else's program. And I have no doubt that, you know, the three assistant coaches that are now power five head coaches, those programs are going to be in really good shape. Just because we haven't seen him play day to day, what's kind of the skill set of Mac? Uh, what's the upside yeah. and where does he fit in, in competition wise? Yeah. I mean, in terms of the, the upside is, um, kind of like I just mentioned with coach Jeske, really having a solid understanding of what we were going to get. Um, you know, the, the first year he played for us was COVID, and so, but he was off to a great start, um, you know, playing on a team that was very good. And then uh, his sophomore year, or second year, I mean, he was batting third and playing left field on uh, an Omaha team. And uh, he got hurt in like the second to last weekend of the season and broke his handmate bone. And then, you know, has the right kind of toughness. Like, you know, he got back with an injury they had no business coming back from. and was playing defense in the postseason and pinch running in the College World Series. And so there's that character toughness factor. And it's just a really good player. You know, it's it's a combination of speed, power, solid hitting skills. I think as we get further into developing how we're going to operate as a team, and I've already seen this, you know, especially even within the last week, you know, he'll be further along than most players, you know, uh, that we have. and. Um, I like to think we're constantly getting better at what we do, but you know his familiarity with that, and he's he's evolved and developed into a really good player. Like we got lucky, like he didn't sign a pro contract, and um, you know I'm very thankful to have him. As far as what else I think he brings, I think he brings tremendous experience, uh, maturity, which that's so important, you know, with what we're doing. Like this is not easy, you know, when you're you're playing at, I mean more than half of our league schedule is going to be against a top 15, you know, team in the preseason. So, you know, you got to have guys that, that handle success well and move forward, that handle failure well and move forward. And he has a really good idea and sense of who he is as a player, what he needs to put in on a daily basis and the skill set. When you put those things together, you get a lot of production. And um, so that was a big, big ad for our team in yeah, a lot of ways. Timeline for facility changes that's coming up? Anything that someone... Yeah, um, you know, I know there's a lot of want to and hope. Um, you know, the immediate is, you know, we won a national championship, so we're going to rebrand, you know, a lot of things around here, and which is great. Um, you know, for me, it, it all goes back to player development. You know, how can we, um, you know, improve the product of what we have for the players to develop to become the best players that they can be? Uh, what I want to I want to build a new indoor hitting center with an indoor infield for when we have rain days we don't miss a beat like that for me that's number one turn the existing cages into a full pitching lab um, you know I believe we're working hard to try to get people you know behind that project I think it's one that won't take a long time to turn around but you know we got to get the money to do it and um, you know in college athletics there's that's a hard hard thing you know right now so we'll keep trying and uh, you know keep trying to put as I promised, a, a product out here that everybody in this state can easily get behind. doesn't mean winning the national championship, but for two years, if you watch our team compete and value winning and the effort they put into it, I think that's an easy thing to get behind, and you know, hopefully more people do that. You talked about being excited about the staff. Is, is it an influx of new that's kind of got you so jazzed? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's kind of a, a grouping of things. You know, I think the guys that took a step forward as the season moved along last year, um, you know, Thatcher, you know, outside of, you know, Paul, you know, right along with, with Ty Floyd, became our most important pitcher. I mean, he won the national championship game, pitched three times in Omaha, had the most important performance of the season against Oregon State, you know, in the winner's bracket game of the, the regional, uh, you know, finished great in the SEC tournament, Georgia, like, so you feel good about his improvement. You know, the guys that got experience in the College World Series, uh, Griffin Herring, Nate Ackenhausen, um, Gavin Guidry. So you have a good core there that got experience at the highest level. Like, you can't put a price on that. That is so important. And then, you know, with some volume going out, I mean, it's 200-plus innings, you know, between Paul and Ty that walked out the door. It's 63 innings. and high leverage, you know, with, with Riley Cooper. Um, so we knew we had to replace some of that. I'm really pleased with getting, you know, Luke Coleman. Um, you know, it's not every day you get to add a SEC starting pitcher, but one of the top five or six starting pitchers in the SEC. So 
you know, that's an awesome ad for us. Gage Jump, you know, um, I think he's going to be as valuable as anybody. He's a, a super competitor, uh, obviously left-handed, hides the ball well, big breaking ball. He's just coming back off Tommy John. So you'll see parts of him. Like you, you, you're not going to pitch the first couple weeks of inner squads because we're doing, we're doing his build up properly. You know, my hope is by the end of the fall you'll see him in some, some games and, and doing some things. But we're really setting him up, lining him up for February. I think he'll be as important as anybody on our pitching staff. Um, you know, Justin Lohr is a tough, uh, angled lefty from Xavier, and then freshmen. You know, Cameron Johnson, Jake Brown, and. Kate Anderson, like that's that's hard to do in one year to get three really good lefties like that. Fidel Uyoa, uh JC right hander, so there's depth, there's different looks, um, pitchability, strikes, toughness. Like I'm excited about the whole thing. I mean, it, this has been like a everyday effort to get this, you know, um, put together like that. You know, so you can win scoring six or seven instead of having to score ten or twelve. Maybe a couple more for Jay. Um, just with, with Gidry, I mean, now that you've had him for a month and just kind of talking through things, just do you expect to see him much in the infield this fall, or what, what's kind of the update, I guess, there with him? Yeah, uh, he he has a small injury to his foot, um, so I don't, I don't really know um, what that looks like in the immediate. Um, he's got uh, he's he's got a lot in front of him as far as how hard he's working. Um, He's such a good athlete and such a good competitor. You never bet against that. Um, it's just a tough load to be a two-way player. And, you know, same with Jake Brown. Like, and I really want Jake Brown to be a two-way player because I think, you know, he, he can definitely impact on both sides of the ball. So, you know, with Gavin, we know what we have on the mound. Um, we're in a better spot to where we're conditioning his arm uh, properly as a pitcher, um, even though he probably won't pitch a whole lot, you know, in the fall, which allows us – time to work on this. I mean, he's fast, uh, handles the bat well, obviously playing at Barb. He was a well-coached player in high school, um, you know, but getting those at bats and experience underneath them will be important to, to see what we have. And, um, you know, I think that's to be determined, but he's a competitor and an athlete, so you like that. Um, Coach, how do you uh, you all figure that you're going to split up uh, the catching duties because you all got a lot of depth in catching, so mm -hmm. you all plan on doing yeah, that? Yeah, really happy about that. I think um, – you know, we're so far away from the season to even elaborate on that. Uh, I trust all three of those guys. And, you know, obviously still having Jared and Ethan, you know, I think are impact hitters, you know, so they'll probably catch the least of that group just to, you know, maintain what they can do for the offense. Um, all of Alex and Brady and Hayden, I mean, we won with all of them, so I'm comfortable with all of them. I think uh, the fact that, you know, Hayden is probably one of our hitters that impacts the ball the best. You know, I'm sure there's some DH at bats in there. You love Alex's experience, um, win ability. I mean, Brady was playing better than both of them, you know, at the beginning of the year last year. So I'm not worried about it. I think the fact that we have to manage all of their bodies, like that's been proven, like all of them have been hurt. It's good that we have all of them. You know, we're not going to have to tax or tax in any of them to where we put them in compromise. Yep. Thanks, Jay. All right. All right. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Coach.